All right, good morning, everyone. We are starting this reaction video bright and early. It is almost seven o'clock in the morning and I have Sabrina Carpenter short and sweet pulled up on the TV and I'm gonna listen to it on the TV, but I'm gonna be reading the lyrics on my laptop right here. And I have it pulled up on Genius. And then I also have a cup of water. <laughs> I'm feeling a little more prepared than my last reaction video when I reacted to Taylor Swift's the Polo, the Torture Poets Department. Before we get into the video, I just want to talk about how I originally am not a Sabrina Carpenter fan. I really do just vibe with whatever is popular, and Nonsense and Feather are definitely favorites. I did try listening to the rest of the album just to see if I liked it, and I do like I liked a boy, like all because I liked a boy. I think it's just called I liked a boy. I like that song, but I don't know. Like, I feel like her songs are so like mix and matchy. To me, they didn't really come together. They were just like singular song. I like albums that kind of make sense together. So I'm hoping this album does well. Jamie actually already listened to this album on his way to work this morning and he started telling me about it. I was like, Jamie, I haven't listened to it yet. I need to listen to it before you tell me anything. He gave it a five out of 10. And he said that Espresso, Please, 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 the literally the mainstream songs that are already on the radio and they have music videos for, he likes them the most. And he thinks it's just because he's biased since he's already been exposed to it, which is totally fair. So let's see if I have the same reaction. Hopefully I give it a higher rating than a 5 out of 10. And I will say that I love all of her cover photos. Like she looks so happy and confident. I feel like this is her because every one of her previous albums, I just felt disconnected to it. It just felt like she was still trying to find her voice. But now it's like because she's boomed and popular, maybe this is it. Like she's finally herself. Okay, let's just get going. Okay, this song started off so fast, but I like it. Or oh, I leave quite an impression, five feet to be exact. Is she five feet? I think she's five feet. She looks short. <laughs> that did not sit well with me. You'll have, you'll just have to taste me when he's kissing you. That's, ugh, seems kind of gross. Ah, uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking, she was with someone and then they broke up and now they're with someone else and she's just thinking about how the next person is going to taste her and stuff. That's weird. <laughs> Honestly, this is kind of on brand with the rest of the album, I guess, because Please 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 is about telling her guy to not embarrass her and mess up her life or whatever. And then Espresso is about how a guy is obsessed with her and can't get rid of her and it's like an addiction. <laughs> That was a good starter song. The one thing that I appreciate about Sabrina Carpenter's current song is that they're very fun to listen to and to sing along to. And I'm really hoping that this entire album maintains that to where I can just listen to it and have a good time. Like there's no brain work going on. It's just fun lyrics. She's expressing her fun and it's just gonna feel like summer, but all year long. So I do have to think about the song. It reminds me of other songs. And I actually slipped and said Olivia Rodrigo at first, but not because I think the song is like Olivia Rodrigo, it's just the same concept as Deja Vu. Very similar. Because Deja Vu, it's about how she stalking the new girl. Or I guess saying that like Olivia was there first before the new girl that came along because he's like passing on things that he did with her and doing it with the new girl. But then Sabrina Carpenter here is saying how this person like has moved on, went back to their past lover, it seems like, but her presence is still always gonna be lingering there. So I guess it's not the same, but it's similar. It just reminds me of deja vu like not the songs are obviously different they're so different and i like this one it's very casual low key and i like it and then another thing the way it sounds it reminds me of ethel kane's american teenager let me make sure that's what the song's called that's it that's all i have to say about the song and i like it the next song is please 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 but it's been playing on the radio so much i've already listened to the music video i've already seen the music video so i'm going to skip it and we're just going to move on to song number three on the album good graces Explicit from the start. <laughs> you do something suspect this kid has a bye bye. I love her confidence. <laughs> That's crazy.
we just finished Good Graces and that song was pretty tame. I, I don't like it as much as I did the first song. It was simple, but all of her songs are simple, which is what I like about her songs. But this one was too simple. It didn't sound exciting. Like it just, the entire song just sounded the same. That was a very skippable song. So Good Graces, you're down here somewhere. <laughs> all right, next song, Sharpest Tool, song number four out of 12. Oh. And I see why she put it after please, 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 because obviously please, please, please is about telling her dude to not embarrass her. And then now the song after that, Good Graces is saying, well, if you messed up, like I'm gonna leave and I don't care about you. Sharpest tool. You're not the sharpest tool in the shade. So she sings in a very high-pitched, airy voice. I don't really know how to describe it because I'm not very musically inclined, but the way she's singing here is so airy that it kind of hurts my breathing. I feel like I can't breathe listening to her sing. Does that make sense? Like it's so high. It makes me feel like I have to stop breathing to listen to her sing. I don't know how else to describe that, but Another person that makes me feel that way is Sophia Carson. I can't listen to her sing. Some of my family members love listening to her sing, but I just can't. Like she's got talent, but I can't breathe. It kind of aggravates me that I can't just enjoy the song. And so this song right now is how that feels for me. It's kind of distracting for the lyrics. So I'm reading the lyrics right now, but I'm so focused on the way she's singing them. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Sharpest tool, also not a favorite. Um, the song kind of just felt like it was repeating itself, which it was, it kept saying, we don't talk about it, we don't talk about it, we never talked about it, all this stuff. And she has like one, two, three, well, I guess only three sections of the song, but how long was it song? The song was like two something minutes, I think. Like it was not long at all. It was, that was too simple for me. So Jamie actually did make a comment saying that this album didn't really feel Sabrina Carpenter but I think he was basing it off of espresso and please, please, please. Like he said, he thinks the vibe is different. And so as I'm going through this album, I realized like these songs are pretty simple and they're kind of not living up to the hype of espresso and please, 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 which is so sad because I was so excited for this album. But we're already on the fourth. This is, we're actually going into the fifth song now, coincidence. And I'm still waiting for like something exciting. The first song I still really liked. So taste was good. And I'm hoping there's going to be another song in here that I really like as well. Maybe it'll be coincidence. Oh, this is a beat. Okay. Why does she have these descriptions? They're so, they're so weird. This week you're holding space for her tongue in your mouth. Is there no other way to describe that? Maybe she wants this to be weird. Like it's not... It's not fun if she's just like, oh, you're just waiting to kiss her again. Oh, you're just waiting to see her again. Yeah, that's pretty boring. It's pretty simple. They just, <coughs> whatever. Ah! Okay. When was the last song she did this where I was uncomfortable with the lyrics? I think it was the very, very first song. Okay, so, so far I'm getting that this album is obviously about how there's another guy in her life, but then like she wants him to keep himself together, her a lover and someone else. Yeah. I can tell she's having fun seeing this song right now, which I love. I love that she's having a good time with this album. <laughs> what are these lyrics? Your car drove itself from LA to her thighs. I, I feel like she was laughing or writing this lyric. She had to be. Whoever she was writing these lyrics with, she was laughing with them. They already had like a cup of wine, a glass of wine on the table or something while she was writing these lyrics. She was probably eating a snack. I don't know. How long did it take her to come up with these lyrics? Okay, I take it back. It's her, someone else, and the person they used to be with. I'm like having a hard time understanding what the coincidence was is that just me being at fault here like it's a coincidence that she showed up in his life and all of a sudden the past lover also came back in his life when she did is that the coincidence i think so <laughs> okay next song bad chem 
bed chem. I'm gonna start reading the lyrics from now on while I'm doing these album reactions because I'm having a lot more fun you No, know, actually like understanding what she's saying. I think whenever I did Taylor Swift's album, she just used so many words at one time and the songs were so long, the album was so long. I just had a really hard time like grasping what Taylor was singing about. So this album, luckily it's only 12 songs and they're all relatively short. Like this one, Bad Chem, is only two minutes and 51 seconds. So, and I have the lyrics in front of me and it's making a lot more sense. Like I can, this album is coming together. It's all the same thing, which is what I wanted. This is what I like. The music, the sound, it's, it's coming. <laughs> I don't even know what number song we're on now. What are we on, six? Although, because we're on song six and she's still talking about the same guy, I think this is the intention of the album following the same story, I guess. This album's called Short and Sweet. This album is short. I guess it could be sweet because she's talking about the same thing, just in different ways. I'm reading these lyrics, I'm wondering like who these songs are about. Like she had to get inspiration from somewhere, right? Is this Barry? Is this song Barry? White Jackie and Thick Accent, does Barry have an accent? I've never actually heard him speak before. Okay, she's singing, she's singing so fast, I can't even keep up the lyrics right now. Never mind. I don't want to read that. But that's why she's singing that verse very fast. <laughs> She's singing so fast, I literally cannot keep up. I'm trying to read the lyrics while she's singing and I just, I have to read the lyrics first so then I can listen to her. Like I missed the lyric, who's the cute guy with the wide blue eyes and the big bad and... <laughs> Why did I just say it like that? That's what it says. Okay, this one I actually like. There was actually substance to it. There's a little bit of spiciness, obviously with the concept of the song, but also the way she sang it. Like the part where she started going fast, I was not expecting it at all. So that threw me off. But then once I like got it, literally by the end of the song, when she started doing it again, I was actually able to keep up because I was expecting it that time. So that one kept me on my feet, figuratively, obviously. And I like it. I probably still like the first song more though. I wonder if I'm biased because I that was the first song I listened to for this entire album after Espresso and Please Please Please. But now Espresso's playing and I could skip it because I've heard it so many times, but I actually really like the song. So we're gonna listen to it anyway. And I'm gonna pull up the lyrics because I've never actually read the lyrics for this song. I just sang whatever I hear. We're probably just gonna listen to it straight. I don't know if I have any comments for this one. <laughs> Having such a good time right now. It's also 7 30. I'm gonna put my earrings in while the song's playing. Okay, what a good song. I'll never get tired of espresso. It's just so easy to listen to, it's so fun. That's definitely the summer song. <sighs> I hope she gets more rewards or something already. I didn't even read the lyrics. Like I've heard it so many times. I just didn't even bother. What are we on? Dumb and Poetic. This is song number eight. Ooh, I'm looking at like the eyeballs on the genius thing. So it tells you how many eyeballs have seen it. And the last two songs definitely don't have as many. Like they didn't even reach 100,000. So is that saying something? Dumb and Poetic only has 116,000 eyeballs, but it has more than coincidence and more than good graces. And guess what? Those are the two that I also didn't like as much. So, okay, makes sense to me. Wait, does that mean I'm also not gonna like this song very much? The first lyric is you're so dumb and poetic. I don't know if I like that, considering that's the song title. I always wonder if like someone's listening to me outside the door or the window. Like, I don't know how soundproof this house is. You're so dumb and poetic. She's not seeming very airy in this song. It does put a little bit more emotion and anger into the song. Like she's actually feeling the lyrics. She wrote it. She's like angrily singing these lyrics. Like she wants this person to know that she's upset with them. So I like it. But this wouldn't be a song that I would listen to over and over again. It sounds too sad. Looks like it's almost over according to these lyrics. This album's called Short and Sweet and literally all these songs are short. Slim Pickens. What? This song's about how she's settling. This song sounds fun and nice and calming, but it's literally about how she's settling for whoever's in front of her or something like that. Like she can't find the person she actually wants, and so she's just with whoever. She's settling! I 
Isn't Juno a movie? A pro-adulthood movie. Wait, I'm gonna read the summary of the movie. When precocious teen Juno becomes pregnant, she chooses a failed rock star and his wife to adopt her unborn child. Okay, and then what are these lyrics? I might let you make me Juno. I guess because Juno got pregnant. One of me is cute, but two the- Oh uh, yeah, I think so because, yeah. Okay, got it. She is so raw in this album. <laughs> Everything she's thinking, it's in here. No sugar coating, nothing. So obviously this lover person did something wrong and he's trying to lie about it. But Sabrina's like, um, you don't have to do that. Cause I already lied to myself about you. That's so sad. Half these songs, are like, yeah, I'm so confident. I'm the best person out here. Like, I am the girl. But then there's other songs like, I'm kind of sad and depressed. She's got a mix in here. She's just putting all of her emotions in this album about this lover person, whoever they are. <laughs> Did someone hurt her? But then I also have to remember that some artists do take inspirations from other people's stories and not their own. I'm reading the lyrics again while she's singing it and it actually makes me so sad because you think that she's talking to this guy but she's actually just talking about herself. How do I explain this? Is this a form of self-deprecation? De deprecation? Self-depreciation? Self-deprecation? Is self-deprecation a word? Self-deprecation. <laughs> self-deprecation. Yeah. Modesty about or criticism of oneself. Yeah. Does she have confidence or not? Okay, we are on the last song and Jamie said he skipped the song because it was too boring. This is Don't Smile, number 12 of Short and Sweet. And it's 7.53 in the morning, which means this album took about an hour with me pausing to actually talk about the songs and also me skipping Please, Please, Please. That's pretty good. The first lyric is don't smile because it happened, baby, cry because it's over. And isn't the saying like, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Ugh. Uh, okay, this is gonna be about like her, him, and like another girl again. And like obviously him being with the other girl. I'm kind of sad she ended the album with a sad song. Maybe this is her saying, be sad because the album's over. <laughs> well, that's it. I think we just went through all 12 songs of the album. So the music video for Taste, the first song on Sabrina Carpenter's new album came out. It is 8.30 right now. So I filmed this video this morning. So it's the same day. And now I'm gonna get Jamie's reaction. I've already watched it three times, once by myself and twice with my coworkers and it's great. So I have it right here. Now Jamie's gonna watch. Is this on YouTube? Yes. This is allowed on YouTube? Yeah. What do you think? Very gory. Wasn't that fun? Very gory. Wasn't that fun though? I did not expect Jenna Ortega to just oh, show I up. Oh, I forgot about that too. Yeah, I knew I knew Jenna Ortega was part of something, but I didn't realize it was this. Oh, I guess there is a viewer warning with graphic violence. Do you rate it? The music or the music video? Oh, I guess most of the music video. Wasn't it fun? It did a good job explaining the song, I guess. You don't watch it again? No. Ugh. Huggy. Eight and a half. Eight and a half? And what do you give the album? A five. Still a five? 5.5. Okay. 
Alrighty, so let's talk about this album. It was 12 songs long, and the list is Taste, Please, 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 Good Gracious, Sharpest Tool, Coincidence, Bed Chem, M M Espresso, Dumb and Poetic, Slim Pickens, Juno, Lie to Girls, and Don't Smile. And I really wish she ended the album with a song that included her confidence. So that way we can leave this album knowing that she's okay. But she ended the album with her being sad. So is she sad right now? Overall, I think I want to give the album like somewhere between a 6 and a 7. A 7 is too high, but a 6 is too low. I want to give it like a 6.8 or something like that. Because 6 sounds like I hate it. 7 seems like it's okay, which it is. But like, I don't want to give it a 7. 7 still seems high. So yeah, I want to 6.8. We're just going to end it at 6.8. And my tops, probably going to be espresso number one. Hmm. I think I want to put taste for number two. And then please, please, please. Oh, what did I like? The other one? I think the other one was Bed Chem because she was like having fun with it. I think I'm gonna have to listen to this whole entire album again. I'm probably gonna listen to it on the way to work. Let me see how long this album is. How long is short? It's 36 minutes long. Okay, so my drive is about 30 minutes. So I could definitely listen to this whole album on the way to work. Alrighty, sounds good. Well, I hope you liked this reaction video. I definitely had a lot more fun listening to this one than the Tortured Poets Department because I had the lyrics in front of me. And also I was actually waiting for this album. Taylor Swift one, I think I was only excited for it because it was Taylor Swift and I went to her Eras tour. But this one I was genuinely excited for, so I had more fun reacting to it. Alrighty, well, thanks for watching this video. Comment down below if you were like me and you didn't start listening to Sabrina Carpenter until Nonsense and Feather got popular. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!